This is a non-profit audiobook series based on a fanfiction of Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Danganronpa is owned by Spike Chunsoft and Kazutaka Kuraka. Alex Redgrave presents... Featuring the talent from Casting Call... Danganronpa. Three Point Shot Based on the fanfiction by Random Rex 6 Narrated, produced, and directed by Alex Redgrave Part 1 The ripple it sent through the group was palpable. The fifteen of them were awash with a tide of relief and terror. On the one hand, Rantaro's death meant the deadline was no longer an issue. No one else had to die. At least no one would die simply because time ran out. The killing game that Monokuma and his cubs were desperate for had begun, and Rantaro was simply the one who was unlucky enough to fall on the sword. But the group was now swimming in shark-infested waters. One of them was a murderer. Theories about masterminds be damned. There was no doubt that one of them had crossed a line. And with no one possessing the abandoned to admit to their deed, the first blood perk would go unclaimed, and the class trial was set to begin. Uncertain of how to address this sort of thing, the group naturally turned to Shuichi for guidance. As the ultimate detective, clearly he would be able to solve a simple murder like this, wouldn't he? Shuichi's attention was of course drawn to the supposed murder weapon. A bloodied shot put, lying on the ground next to Rantaro's corpse. The ball was consistent with the shape of Rantaro's fatal injury, which made it seem all too clear that the first question had been answered. In one history, this would lead down a road of despair, distrust, and miscarriage of justice. But all that went awry with the actions of a single person, a single variable that no one could have seen coming. Kokichi picked up the shot put. It definitely has a good weight. I can see it cracking open a skull. Kokichi, put that down. Kaede yelled. You're tampering with the evidence. The self-professed dictator scoffed. What? It's not like we're taking fingerprints. He started to pass the ball between his hands. And it's not like I'm any stranger to tamper with crime scenes. Evil organizations have to do this sort of thing all the time. Even so, your life is at stake just like everyone else's. Shuichi reminded him. I wouldn't- Of course you wouldn't, Shuichi. Kokichi mocked. That's why I need to do it. Three point shot! Kokichi then turned and threw the shot put upward onto the ledge of one of the tall bookshelves. It remained up there, to the dismay of the others. The hat wearing detective let out a sigh. I'll get it. Kaede gulped. Uh, maybe I should. No, it's fine. Shuichi counted. Already moving the ladder into place. We wouldn't want a repeat of our last awkward exchange. Kaede's reaction was torn between the sweat of Shuichi discovering the trail of evidence she'd left behind, or the blush of being reminded of his unintentional voyeurism. A cry of got it caused sweat to win by a country mile. Shuichi climbed down, having gone silent. He moved slowly and cautiously until he laid the offending sphere back into its original resting place. He turned his head, and Kaede suddenly felt the full force of the eye contact he had long been avoiding. Kaede. Y yeah I need you to keep everyone in this room, just for a little while. Kaede nodded. Sure. Shuichi turned to the rest of the group. 
I need a volunteer to come with me. I've got something I need to test. Kokichi's hand shot up like a rocket. Oh, oh! Pick me, Shuichi! Shuichi shook his head in exasperation. All right, fine. Follow me. As the two walked away, Kokichi turned to shoot Kaede a sly grin. Shuichi's last words to the group were, Watch your heads. Less than eight minutes went by before a rumbling noise began to echo through the library. The captive audience Shuichi had left behind looked up and saw an horrific sight. A metal ball made its way through the air vent and down the row of bookshelves. Kaede struggled to keep her eyes open. She hadn't meant to kill Rantaro. She was after the mastermind. And with the benefit of hindsight, she had grown to regret that she had ever considered murder an option. And now, thanks to that annoying little brat, Kokichi, she would have to witness her crime play out firsthand. And everyone would watch. She could hear them now, cries of disbelief from some. Kaito would deny to the end, Kibo would protest in his formal manner, Tenko would refuse to believe the killer was a girl, Gozo would defend her honor like the gentleman he was. It would almost sting more than when Kukichi mocked her, or when Mew would say she knew it was that flat-chested bitch all along. And just as the ball made its way to the last shelf, and flew off towards where the unsuspecting victim would be. It fell. Nowhere near the victim's position. Nowhere near the blood-stained shelf that illustrated the point of impact. It fell. On the floor. Just to the side of the victim. And it rolled backward toward the door. Kaede was left in a stupor as Shuichi and Kokichi returned. Where's the second ball? Shuichi asked. As the others discussed this new evidence with the returning students, Kaede stayed away. Instead, she walked toward the corpse and simply stared. She could hear the others mutter and mumble as they posited their own theories. She was faintly aware of the fact that many of the others had since vacated the library. But all of that was just window dressing to the main piece of information that took shelter at the forefront of her mind. You didn't do it. She turned. Shuichi was the only one left in the library besides her. How? As soon as I saw the row of books, it became clear. Shuichi explained. I thought it was odd you were taking so much time reorganizing the top of the bookcases, but once I saw what you had done... <laughs> Do you hate me? Kaede asked. Kaede? I... Kaede began, choking back tears. I was ready to accept punishment for what I did. I was gonna tell you to do whatever it took to solve the case. I was going to force you to march me off to my death. Kaede... I wanted to help everyone. I thought capturing the mastermind wouldn't be enough. So I used you. I used your plan to create a murder. You didn't kill anyone. By sheer luck! She screamed. She gripped her shoulders tightly and began to shake. It... It didn't even occur to me that I was that far gone. I was willing to kill someone. It doesn't matter why. Yes, it does. He reassured her. You wanted to protect everyone because that's who you are. You're the kind of person who wants to keep people safe. And right now, that's the kind of person we need. Shuichi... I was terrified, you know. Shuichi pulled down the brim of his hat. The poor boy was desperate to avoid this conversation, but knowing all too well, it needed to happen. When I threw that shot put, I was terrified that I was going to find out that... that... I was the killer? Shuichi nodded. Yes. I don't know that I would have been able to reveal that to everyone. Is that why you took Kokichi with you? Once it got out that you and I were waiting in the upstairs classroom, it would be a short jump to realize that one of us threw the ball, and that I wouldn't have put on that production a moment ago if I were the killer. Shuichi reasoned. So I guess... we're back to square one on investigating? Kaede asked. I do have some theories, but right now I'm collecting alibis mostly. Shuichi replied. Kaede looked away. 
I guess you better get to work. I'll need help. The pianist's eyes went wide, meeting the detective's eyes once more. Me? As I said before, I feel like I can trust you, Kaede. How? After what I did? But you didn't do anything. Shuichi! Kaede! Shuichi interjected. You tried to save us all. You didn't choose the best method, and that is something you'll have to face. It may prove difficult to clear your name at the trial, but I'm willing to fight. I want to find the truth, and I can't do it alone. Will you help me? Kaede looked downward, catching a glimpse of her own hands in the process. Her nails still held the color that Rantaro had given them. She stole a glance to the amnesiac's corpse again, and took a deep breath. Okay, let's do it. I won't let Rantaro's death be in vain. Shuichi smiled. That's the spirit. The two made their way out of the library and began to walk up the stairs to investigate the others more thoroughly. No, Shuichi said, seemingly out of nowhere. Huh? Kaede replied. Your question from earlier. I don't hate you. I don't think I ever could. The pianist found that for the first time since she threw that accursed ball, a song was playing in her heart. The shaky elevator made its way down to the trial room slowly but surely. Investigation went more or less smoothly after Shuichi's experiment with the vent system. Kaede had been somewhat quiet throughout, taking point in questioning here and there, but for the most part leaving the detective to do what he did best. Regardless, his concern shone through. Are you worried? She nodded. Yeah. I'm going to have to tell them, aren't I? That would be the best way to go about it. They'll accept your reasoning a bit better if you're forthcoming about it, Shuichi explained. I still don't know if I can do this, she muttered, lowering her head. A brief moment of silence went by, and Kaede soon discovered a bit of weight had been placed upon her, her forehead being slightly constricted. When she raised her hands to check, her suspicions were confirmed. Your hat? Shuichi scratched at the back of his head. Like I said, I use it so I don't have to look people in the eye. But right now, you need it more than I do. Kaede gripped the brim and adjusted the cap to fit better to her head. She stole a glance at the now hatless boy and gave a small grin. Thanks. Shuichi grinned as well. It... It looks good on you, he muttered sheepishly. Kaede chuckled. I wish you had an extra, though. You've got pretty bad hat hair. The black-haired boy ran his hands across his scalp, noticing the ahoge he traditionally concealed, and offered a half-hearted, <laughs> Yeah. A sudden clanging noise alerted the group to the fact that the elevator had finished its journey into the depths of the school, and they were ushered to the trial grounds. Here we go, Kaede whispered to herself. The students each took to their respective podiums, and the trial began. All right, Monokuma declared. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial! After a period of debate, you will take a majority vote for who you believe is the killer. If you're right, the killer is punished. But if you're wrong, everyone else is punished, and the killer is allowed to leave the Ultimate Academy of Gifted Juveniles scot-free! Just like our papa to give such a perfect explanation. Monotaro exclaimed. And it only took him one try. Monophony noted. 
Monosuke looked over his abacus before responding. I'll use an old hand at this sort of thing. Hell yeah! Monokid shouted. We've got our work cut out for us to be that good someday! Especially Monodum! Monodum remained silent. Old hand? Kaede wondered. Have there been other killing games before? Karakio started the discussion amongst the students. If I may be so bold as to begin our debate, I have two questions I must ask. Firstly, why did the killer not make use of the First Blood perk? Kaede's voice wouldn't escape her throat. When she thought she'd killed Rantaro, her plan was to pass up the First Blood perk and use the class trial to uncover the Mastermind's identity. But now that it seemed like she wasn't guilty, she was left baffled. What other reason was there to give up on a free pass to escape? My first instinct, Ryoma answered, is that they have something to gain from the trial process. But the only results are them leaving or dying, Kaito countered. So why risk dying when they could leave automatically? You don't think... Zumugi pondered aloud, beginning to shudder at the prospect. Whoever it is wants to kill all of us, do you? I don't think that's the case, Shuichi interjected. I can't imagine anyone would truly desire to see 15 strangers dead after only a few days. Then there must be some benefit to the trial itself, Kirumi surmised. I think so, the detective replied. They have something to gain from going through the motions. Well, they're a dumbass if they think this'll work, Kaito proclaimed. After all, we've got the ultimate detective on our side. Shuichi was suitably embarrassed by this. <laughs> Thanks. Getting to my second question then. Karekio interrupted. What was the purpose of Shuichi's demonstration with the shot put along the row of bookcases? Shuichi took a moment to glance at Kaede before she gave him a nod to indicate that he was free to proceed. Mew, would you please show us your aerial picture of the library? Mew grinned from ear to ear. Of course! You'd need the help of a genius like me! She pulled out the panoramic picture she had made through the use of a drone. Drink it all in, bitches! Shuichi pointed to the bookcase on the picture. Monokuma brought up a larger version on the various view screens around the class, and highlighted the area Shuichi referred to. As you can see, there's a pathway constructed by a row of books on top of the bookcases. It leads from the open vent down to where we found Rontaro's body. And you never would have thought to look, if not for me. Kokichi boasted. Be that as it may, Shuichi said, choosing to ignore Kokichi. My immediate response to seeing this was thinking the murderer could have thrown a ball through the vent, and the pathway would lead it to strike Rontaro. Ah, uh, a long range move like that? Kimiko mumbled. That's pretty advanced magic. But... Shuichi and Kokichi tested that earlier, right? Angie asked. It didn't actually work that way. Apparently not, Shuichi confirmed. Hold on! Kibo interrupted. That ventilation shaft connects to the classroom next to the stairwell. The well, uh, well, let's call them attacker, would have had to throw the ball from there. And the only two people in that room were- I threw it! Kaede's words made the entire room go silent. I don't think I killed Rantaro, but I definitely tried to. The quiet quickly gave way to madness. You... you what? Kaito exclaimed. This... this is a joke, right? Tenko added. Gota can't believe this. He won't believe it. <laughs> well, things are getting fun. Hmm. Was all Maki offered. Atua didn't tell me about this. Hi, idiot. You tried to. The trouble with being an ultimate pianist was that Kaede's sense of hearing was highly acute. She could make out every word her classmates said, and it was just as heart-rending as she imagined it would be. But one voice cut through the maelstrom of sound. Everyone, let her talk!
the room once again went quiet with Shuichi's words. Kaede turned her gaze to the black-clad boy and saw a look of fierce determination in his eyes. Shuichi, you're actually pretty cool. She thought. Sorry, he began. But we won't be able to move forward until you listen to her. All eyes were on the capped blonde, and she took a deep breath before she set the truth free. The more Shuichi told me about his plan, the more worried I got that it wasn't going to work. We were putting all our eggs in one basket, and we only had one shot to find the mastermind. So... I thought... I... I... She gulped. I should make sure the mastermind couldn't keep the game going. I figured out how I could get the weapon to the scene of the crime without anyone, not even Shuichi, noticing. I turned the flash of one of the cameras back on to get the mastermind into place. And I was going to do it. I did do it. She pulled the brim of Shuichi's hat down as far as it would go. I tried to kill the mastermind. And now... Now Rantaro's dead instead. Tears began to streak down the pianist's face. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't want this to happen. Quit crying. Kaede's head popped up to see who had made such a rude remark. Unsurprisingly, it was Kokichi. Shuichi already proved it wasn't you. Your little murder machine didn't work right. So you've got nothing to feel guilty about. A person is dead, Kokichi! Kaede shrieked. So maybe you should spend less time whining and more time figuring out who the real murderer is, hmm? Kokichi shot back with a smirk. Hey, lay off her, you jerk! Kaito shouted. Kaito. Kaede muttered, touched. A degenerate male such as yourself has no right to be so cruel. Tenko added. Tenko. Kaede. Kibo said. Please don't cry. None of us can blame you for trying to save us all. Kibo. If anything, it's my fault. Shuichi reassured her, feeling somewhat dejected. I sort of forced my plan on you. I never asked what you felt we should- It's fine. Kaede said, cutting him off. She wiped the tears from her eyes. Everyone, thank you. A feeling of warmth and camaraderie came over the group for the first time since the body discovery announcement rang through the school's halls. The crime was far from solved, but Kaede had been absolved of guilt she didn't deserve. That was what mattered. As the students reassured Kaede that they harbored no ill will towards her, in spite of her actions, the Monocubs took this time to indulge in some color commentary. Look at them all! Monophony commented. They're all so happy! It's beautiful! Whatever! Monokid scoffed. This sappy stuff just gets on my nerves! Are those tears I see in your eyes, Monokid? Monosuke snarked. What? Monokid shouted back. No, uh, Monodem made me eat onions earlier. Monodem remained silent. I thought you only cry when you sniff onions, not eat them. Monotaro muttered. It's him! Monokuma called out, getting the attention of the class. In case you forgot, this is a class trial, not group therapy. Get back on track. He says that, but all the clues we had pointed to Kaede. Zumugi commented. But Kaede isn't the culprit, right? Gonta asked. It seems unlikely. Shuichi corrected. Unfortunately, my test isn't a complete guarantee. If you can't find anyone else, I'll accept the blame. Kaede offered. It's the least I can do. We aren't gonna let that happen, Kaito declared. Let's figure out who really did it. That sounds all well and good. Maki countered. 
But what evidence do we still have? Is the metal ball still the murder weapon? Himiko wondered. Shuichi nodded. It's still consistent with the shape of the wound, and the Monokuma file says that the head trauma was Rontaro's cause of death. If we still trust the Monokuma file, we need to assume that whoever killed Rontaro did so after Kaede set her trap into motion. Karekio theorized. In that case, we need to gather alibis for that time. Kirumi responded. Why? Tsumugi asked. The hidden cameras don't show anyone other than Rontaro going into the room. The cameras have a 30 second interval between shots. Mew explained. Anyone could have gotten in and killed Mama's boy if they were careful about it. Who knew about that other than you? Kokiji asked. Just me and Spuichi over here. Mew replied. So Shuichi could have gone in the room unseen? Kokichi posited. But he couldn't have left without the camera going off. Kaede counted. I ran into him outside the library after I made my way downstairs. And Kaede couldn't have gotten around me in that time, so she couldn't get in either. Shuichi added. Are we saying the culprit didn't know about the camera intervals and still wasn't caught on film? Maki wondered. That or me you did it. Kokiji replied with a grin. Except Mew was with myself, Kyo, and Samugi in the cafeteria at the time. Kirumi commented. Our alibis are unassailable. That's right, you lying little abortion. Where's your alibi? The inventor shouted. The so-called dictator began to tear up. Mew, you're so mean. Just because I don't have an alibi? You think I did it? <laughs> a somewhat horrific display of tears burst free from Kokichi's eyes. After he'd settled down, he returned to his usual smile as though nothing had happened. Ah, that was refreshing. Besides Kokichi, Shuichi began getting control of the discussion again. Kibo and Ryoma don't have alibis. I apologize for the inconvenience. Kibo proclaimed. Huh. Ryoma chuckled. Being suspected is new to me. Hey. Himiko spoke up. How did the culprit get in the room and not get caught anyway? Himiko's question is super important. Tenko exclaimed. Is it even possible to do that? Kaede studied the aerial picture again. I don't know. There's only two entrances into the library, so... Three. Huh? All eyes were on Kokichi, who looked very nonchalant about the whole thing. There's the two main entrances, and the door to the Mastermind's lair. That door wasn't used, Shuichi explained. The dust in the card reader- I'm saying they were already in their secret room and walked out. Kokichi interrupted, speaking in a mocking tone. They wouldn't need to touch the card reader as long as they left the door open behind them. But to get in the room in the first place, Shuichi began. Kokichi was having none of this, however. Do you really think there's only one way in or out that room? The room went quiet. Kokichi, what do you mean? Sumugi inquired. We were told at the start that this school was built just for us. Kokichi reasoned. That means the mastermind could make the building structure work however they wanted. Pretend you're the mastermind for a second. Would you really want the only passageway to your secret lair being a room that anyone can walk into whenever they wanted? Silence reigned. That's actually a really good point, Shuichi commented. <laughs> you don't get to be the ultimate supreme leader without knowing how to build an evil lair, Kokichi said with a smirk. If Kokichi's right, Kaede theorized, then that means the real murderer is the mastermind. So, I guess our plan worked after all, Shuichi muttered. Furthermore, the mastermind wanted the class trial more than anyone, so it makes sense they wouldn't use the first blood perk. Ryoma added. So, do we think the mastermind is the culprit? Angie asked. Of course we do! Kaito declared. We were stupid to think anyone else would want to kill someone in the first place! What of Kaede's murder attempt? 
Maki countered. That doesn't count, the aspiring astronaut replied. But do we have any way of telling who among us is the mastermind? Gonta wondered. Shuichi pondered for a moment before he spoke. If the mastermind is the killer, that means they arrived at the scene after Kaede's trap failed and left the scene through the hidden door behind the bookcase. Then, they used another entrance to leave the hidden room and return somewhere. The bookcase shut behind us as we arrived at the library. Kaede recalled. So that means it's someone who doesn't have an alibi for the time between when I threw the ball and when we arrived. Tenko and Kaito were with us at the time, so it can't be either of them. Shuichi began. But beyond that, since we don't know where the other door is, it could be anyone. Not anyone. Maki shot back. Himiko, Angie, and I were all in the game room for that time, so we can account for each other. What about Gonta? Kaito questioned. Gonta was in the AV room by himself. The entomologist admitted. But Gonta's not the mastermind. That's the least gentlemanly thing a person could be. We examined the AV room thoroughly. Shuichi reassured the group. If there was a hidden door in there, we would have found it. Then we have the group of people who were eating their last meal. Kaito thought out loud. That'd be my amazing self, the masked freak, Miss Maiden Plain Jane, right? Mew asked. Which just leaves Ryoma, Kibo, and Kokichi. Kaede concluded. I knew it had to be one of those degenerate males. Please, reconsider! Kibo shouted. I would not do such a thing. <laughs> Kokichi's signature cackle caught everyone's attention. Kaede, you forgot something. He sang. What? Now that you have a time frame for the crime, someone's alibi doesn't hold up anymore. The short statured Lyre advised. Someone's alibi doesn't hold up? Kaede wanted. Kaede's eyes wandered the room. If Kokichi was telling the truth, then someone she thought had an alibi was actually lying. It seemed impossible to piece together. And suddenly, a single piece of information took root in her mind. At one point she left for the bathroom. She wasn't gone for very long, so I didn't find it suspicious. Smoogie. Kaede's declaration was just above a whisper as realization dawned. The blue-haired cosplayer immediately turned to her. What's wrong? Around what time did you go to the bathroom? Just a few minutes before. Smoogie trailed off. She blinked twice before realizing what she was actually being asked. Are you accusing me? To answer your question, Correcchio chimed in. It was just a few minutes before the body discovery announcement. She didn't return until slightly afterward. Exactly when the mastermind would have been committing the crime, Shuichi realized. Hold on a second! Sumugi cried. Are you really accusing me of murder just because I couldn't hold my pee? It's not that I'm accusing you. Kaede replied. It's just that you don't have an alibi anymore, and we need to explore that. <laughs> Isn't it weird that that's the only part of the night that you don't have an alibi for? Kokichi taunted. I was in the bathroom! Sumugi shouted. That's right, you were. Shuichi said, his tone indicating he was beginning to put the pieces together. And that's just about perfect. What are you talking about? Sumugi grew more and more frantic with every comment. Like Kokichi said, the detective explained. If I were the mastermind, I'd want to hide an entrance to my secret lair where no one would look, and it would have to be a room that the ultimate detective couldn't examine thoroughly. The woman's bathroom. Kaito muttered. Shuichi tried to examine that place. 
I would give him such a thrashing! Tenko proclaimed. Tsumugi protested. Kaido leaves a trail of him that's two miles wide, and just because her little boyfriend does a half a science fair project, we're gonna believe she's innocent? Boyfriend? Shuichi and Kaede shouted in disbelief. They then proceeded to avert their eyes from one another in embarrassment. Excellent work trying to change the topic, Kokichi commented. You shut up, you little brat! was Tsumugi's only reply. Not that I disagree on Kokichi's brathood. Maki chimed in. But thanks to that science fair project, as you called it, Kaede's guilt was questionable at best. Maki rolls right! Kaito chirred. Meanwhile, you still can't prove you didn't do anything! The hell did you call me? Maki spat. Smooky. Kaede said, returning to the conversation. I don't want to believe it was you. But you're not doing a good job of defending yourself. I don't need to defend myself! You're the one who threw the ball! You goddamn admitted to what you did! Sumugi argued. But that doesn't mean anything if the mastermind could have done it. Kaede countered. You're just gonna listen to Kokichi's stupid theory? He lies out his ass all the time! Kokichi just smirked. I find it funny that I don't have an alibi. But she just wants to pin it on Kaede instead! You're the one who killed Rontaro! Tsumugi proclaimed. That's how it's supposed to go! How what's supposed to go? Kaede asked. This trial! You're the guilty one, and you die! And then the game keeps going! That's how it works! So you wanted a trial? Shuichi attempted to confirm. All of you be quiet! Tsumugi screeched. Kaede decided it was time to go for broke. You're the real mastermind, aren't you? Smoothie refused to listen and began screaming assorted sentences in response. I'm done listening to you! But Kaede kept fighting back. You set up everything so someone would be tempted into murder. You're the one who killed him! And when that didn't work, you took matters into your own hands. This isn't how it goes! And now that we're on your trail, you're panicking. <laughs> Quit breaking away from me! You don't have anything to refute our argument. I don't need to refute your argument! There's nothing you can do to prove your crazy theory! No, that's wrong! The entire room was taken aback by Kaede's bold claim. Smoogie, if we're wrong about everything, then you wouldn't mind if Shuichi investigated the women's bathroom, right? What? I say we let Shuichi investigate the women's bathroom top to bottom. If he doesn't find a hidden passageway, then we'll just have to move on, won't we? We can't. So, girls? Kaede asked the room. Mind if we let Shuichi take a look? I don't mind. Maki replied. I will want to supervise, but sure. I do think that's a good idea. Himiko yawned before saying, <sighs> Go with me. Suichi getting down and dirty in a girl's bathroom. Mew joked. I like it. If that is everyone's wish, I will also permit it. Kirumi finished. <laughs> no. Tsumugi shuddered. This isn't happening. Well, Monokuma, how about it? Kaede challenged. The Earth Sign Headmaster considered this for a moment before declaring, I suppose a little break couldn't hurt. What? Tsumugi yelled. Why would you do that? You can't just let them do this. That's not how this goes. I'm the Headmaster, dearie. Monokuma reminded her. What I say trumps everything else! You can't let the trial go like this! You need me! Samugi immediately clasped her palm over her mouth after she realized what she had said. An audible gasp filled the room. You... and Monokuma... Kaede muttered. Shuichi finished the thought. 
We're working together? I... I... The cosplayer was at a loss for words. I... I... I don't understand. How... How did this happen? Shuichi's eyes shut tight as he began to piece things together in his mind. I can tell you exactly how it happened. The detective took a breath before letting his train of logic run its full course. This murder began with Monokuma's declaration that if no one was killed in a predetermined time limit, he would have all of us killed. In response, I came up with a plan in the hopes of finding and neutralizing the mastermind hiding among us. I invited Kaede to help me, unaware that she had her own plan in mind. As I set up my trap for the Mastermind, Kaede set up her own trap to kill the Mastermind by luring them into position to be killed by a shot put, guided by a row of books. After all the pieces were in place, we waited for the Mastermind's arrival. During that time, Kaito gathered a group to hold a strategy meeting should the time limit run out. Amongst that group was the victim, Rontaro. For reasons that remain unknown, Rontaro excused himself and made his way to the library. Upon uncovering the hidden door behind the bookcase, Kaede's trap sprung into action, and as I made my way to the library, she threw the shot put, believing the one who triggered the motion sensor was the mastermind. However, despite Kaede's efforts, her trap failed, and the ball completely missed Rontaro. At this point, the true culprit, the mastermind, entered the library through the hidden door, thus avoiding any of the cameras we had set up. They took this opportunity to bludgeon Rontaro to death and allow Kaede to take the blame. There are multiple suspects who lack alibis, but one is more noteworthy than the rest. One person who disappeared for the exact portion of the night during which the mastermind would have been killing Rontaro. Sumugi Shirogane, you're the real murderer! With the entire case laid bare before them, the class felt reassured that they had come to the proper conclusion. With nothing left to say, Monokuma decided to take action. Alright then, if there's nothing left to discuss, then I guess it's voting time! What? Sumugi cried. You can't be serious! Deadly serious! With the emphasis on deadly... <laughs> Papa, can we do this part? Monotaro asked. Well... I guess you could use the practice. Monokuma agreed. All right then, please cast your votes with the lever in front of you. Monotaro ordered. Who's gonna get chosen as the culprit? Monosuke wondered. Will your choice be right or hopelessly wrong? Monokid shouted. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Monophony asked, quivering at the possibilities. Monodom, again, remained silent. The class slowly but surely cast their votes. And after the final vote was set in, the view screens around them displayed what appeared to be a roulette wheel with each of their faces on it. The roulette wheel spun before finally landing on Sumugi's face. Bright colors and flashing lights only serve to emphasize the most important feature. A single prominent word. Guilty. Well, congratulations to you guys! 
I didn't think you could do it, but you did it! The real culprit behind Rantaro Amami's death was Samugi Shirogane! Monokuma's words were cool comfort to the students now. They had prevailed. They had not only found Rantaro's killer, but also the mastermind. But now they were just left wondering what came next. The idea that someone as soft-spoken as Samugi being the one who had put them through such an ordeal was so surreal that none of them could even speak. Samugi, for her part, was a gibbering mess. This... this isn't happening. This wasn't... this wasn't... Kaede was the first to speak up. Samugi... you... you're really... She was almost immediately cut off. It's not supposed to be me! It's supposed to be you! You keep saying things like that, Shuichi chimed in. But what does that mean? Kaede! Samugi struggled to maintain her composure. She was supposed to take the blame! That's how it's supposed to go! But what do you mean by supposed to? The detective asked. It means that Kaede's role was to be my scapegoat! Samugi cried. She dies, then you take up her feelings for the rest of the game! That's how the story goes! So, even when the game started... Kaede questioned, horrified. You wanted me dead? Specifically me? Of course! You're the perfect sacrifice to keep things interesting! Sumugi proclaimed. I just wanted to keep the story on track. But then you... you... She broke out into a fit of defeated laughter. <laughs> You just had to fucking miss, didn't you? So you didn't account for that, Shuichi muttered. Even after I had to step in, it was going perfectly. Kaeda was all set to take the fall from me, but then... The venom in her voice reached its zenith. You... you ruined everything with one fucking joke! <laughs> Kokichi chuckled. I like to keep things light. Kaede gave the short boy a tender look. Kokichi, you saved me. Thank you. Don't thank me. Kokichi smirked. I would have just as happily let you die. Whenever it was most fun. This understandably threw the pianist off. Um, okay. In any case, Shuichi interjected. There's still an important question we need to answer. Sumugi. Are you the mastermind behind this killing game? The cosplayer scoffed, put on a haughty look, and proudly declared, As a matter of fact, I- Nope! The entire class, Sumugi included, was struck silent by Monokuma's words. I'm afraid Sumugi is not the mastermind you're looking for. Hey, hey! Monotaro shouted, did we check for identification? What chick IDs if Pop said she ain't the mastermind? Monosuke asked back. Hold on here! Tsumugi protested. Of course I'm the mastermind! You chose me! You said that I would be the next- Ah, ah, ah! Once again, she was cut off by the black and white bear. You wouldn't want to spoil anything more than we already have, right? No! Not spoilers! Monophony plucked her ears. I've been so good about not looking them up. Monikid strummed his guitar for emphasis. Hell yeah! People who don't mark spoilers are the absolute worst! Even worse than Monodem! Monodem's silence seemed to have a different air about it than normal. And then, it finally broke. Punishment time! Sumugi's heart sunk. Words fell on deaf ears. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment for the ultimate cosplayer, Samugi Shiragane! Please don't do this! You still need me! I can still be of use to you! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! You. You.
As a hazard alarm began to blare, the other students instinctively backed away from Sarugi. The cosplayer, for her part, grew very shifty-eyed, as if she were sensing something coming. But in spite of her best efforts, a metal collar latched around her neck and pulled her out of the courtroom into a strange waiting area. She soon found herself locked in some sort of chair, like one you might find at a beauty salon. As the monocubs approached with various types of makeup and articles of clothing, the true punishment process began in earnest. In a maelstrom of fabrics and a hailstorm of colors, Sumugi was forced out of her traditional uniform, and her appearance was significantly changed. Her hair was now a pinkish blonde, and done up in pigtails, being held in place with clips that looked like monokuma. She was adorned in a different uniform, with a black top, white tie, and red skirt. Her nails were fake and equally bright red. And her feet were now sporting high-heeled boots. Her face was made to look as flawless as possible, near unrecognizable as the person she once was. Whoever she now looked like, it was an imitation befitting someone with Sumugi's moniker. With the makeover complete, Sumugi was unceremoniously forced from the chair and up against the wall. Suddenly, thin ropes were wrapped around her wrists, knees, ankles, stomach, and most distressingly her neck, binding her to the wall behind her. Suddenly, the floor around her sprung upward, closing in on her, and the upward wall trapping her in a box. The box was labeled Life-Size Mastermind Doll. As Sumugi began to struggle for breath, she noted her bonds, the twist ties holding the doll in place, were growing tighter. More than that, they were digging into her skin. These weren't merely thin ropes, they were made from garot wire. Monokuma and his cubs tugged on the wire from behind the box, causing them to grow taut, digging tighter and tighter into Tsumugi's flesh. As blood seeped out of her wounds, and the slow burning pain grew more and more, Tsumugi found herself struggling to keep her eyes open, as though this would somehow make it stop. A snapping sound, followed by the wires cutting all the way through, past the back of the box, was the actual end of her suffering. The wires flew backward towards Monokuma and his cubs, and the bears scattered to avoid being sliced into scrap metal. Monotaro failed to escape in time. As his cubs were awestruck by the loss of their leader, Monokuma merely strolled up to the box noted his handiwork, and applied a sticker to the front. Some assembly required. The students were thrown into an uproar at the sight of this execution. <clears throat> what the hell was that? Kaito exclaimed. I thought it would be the electric chair or something. This... this is completely illogical! Kibo proclaimed. Who would come up with something so horrible? Atto? Angie prayed. Please guide Sumuki so dress. Even if she was evil and stuff, no one deserves to die like that. Even the more abrasive students, such as Maki or Mew, were stunned to the point of silence. Kokichi simply turned and walked away. Kaede was standing at attention, as though she were waiting for some kind of sign. The Monokuma family, on the other hand, was occupied by a different death. Monophony shouted. Whoa! Why'd he die? Monokid asked. This is best. The other Monokubs turned to Monodom. We should get along. We can share in grief. We should get along. Mono Dam, what happened to you? Monoske questioned. We should get along. Monodom repeated. Let's get out of here! Monokid advised. Monodom's starting to creep me out! So long, farewell! The cubs exclaimed as they left. Monokuma seemed unaffected by either event. 
It's always sad when you have to bury your children. But what's the point of living if you don't experience every despair imaginable? <laughs> no one offered a response. What's wrong with you brats? You look like you've seen a ghost. Is Zamugi haunting you? Monokuma mocked. Kaede finally spoke. Were you telling the truth? Was Samugi really not the mastermind? Of course not! Monokuma answered. Why would I let the mastermind run around where any of you could stab them in the neck or something? Then Shuichi realized the mastermind isn't even in the school? Maybe, maybe not. Monokuma hedged. Why don't you figure it out for yourselves? Before he could leave, Kaede called out to him. Wait! What do you want now? Just... Kaede's voice grew softer as she spoke. Why? Why did Sumugi help you? Hmm... Hard to say. Monokuma pondered this. I guess she was just one of my many adoring fans! And you just killed her? Kaede yelled, tears in her eyes. You killed your own ally! Your so-called son is dead too! Do you not care about anything? <laughs> the bat chuckled. I really don't get you, Kaede. If she'd had her way, you'd be killed for a crime you didn't commit. And you're crying about her being dead? She... The pianist barely choked out. She didn't deserve to die like that! You think so? Monokuma asked. If you knew about all the other stuff she did for me, I wonder if you'd feel the same way? With that cryptic question, the bear finally left. So, now what? Kaito asked. We... move on. I suppose. Kibo replied. As the group filed out of the trial grounds, Kaede wiped the tears from her eyes. She felt a comforting hand on her shoulder. Sure enough, it was Shuichi. Are you going to be okay? I honestly don't know. She answered. Kaede. We might never know why she did all this, Shuichi. She's just gonna be this horrible, demonized murderer in everyone's mind and I... Kaede took a breath. All I can think about is how that was almost me. None of us would have thought of you like that. Shuichi protested. How can you know? She shot back. We'll never know what that world would be like. Maybe. Maybe in that world. In the world where we understood her. It would make sense. All of this would make perfect sense. Maybe we'd be better off. No, that's wrong! Shuichi's counter broke through Kaede's tirade of self-loathing. He continued from there. I refuse to believe a world where you were killed for no reason would be better. Shuichi averted his eyes. I didn't talk with Sumugi much, but I don't think she would have dwelled on you having to die like you are with her. You're the kind of person who wants to see the best in people. We need someone like that, Kaede. He took hold of her hand. We need you. The once sad girl smiled. Shuichi, thank you for everything. Shuichi blushed in response. Uh, sure. The pianist laughed a bit at his embarrassment. Hey, Shuichi. Hmm? We're not done, are we? The detective shook his head. No, we still don't know why Rontaro went off on his own, and we probably should investigate the girl's room to see if there's a passageway in there. We may not like what we find, but we need to find out. Kaede declared. Face whatever cruel truth awaits me head on. She took off the loaned hat. Oh, thanks. He looked at it for a moment. Is something wrong? Kaede asked. I... I'm not sure I need it anymore. He replied. Are 
you sure? Shuichi nodded. If you're going to face whatever's ahead, I should face it too. As a detective, I can't avert my eyes to the truth. All right. Kaida yelled. Let's do this. Hey. Mew shouted from across the way. Do you two lovebirds quit holding hands and get a move on? The two looked down to their hands and realized that, indeed, neither had released their grip on the other. The two quickly broke away and made their way to the elevator. But what none of them could have known was that an interesting discussion was happening in a sealed room very far away. This could prove troubling. With the primary asset lost, we may have difficulty controlling the narrative. The narrative was always more of a guideline than a script anyway. Regardless, the narrative is now irreparably damaged. What would you suggest? We'll proceed with the game as originally planned. Hopefully we will prove to be able to resume control with the next round. Might I suggest motivational tool beta 2 slash j be substituted in for the next round? Hmm. I agree. Anyone else? I run amongst the shadowy figures. Motion carries. Prepare the videos. You have been listening to part one of Three Point Shot, an audiobook series narrated, directed, and produced by Alex Redgrave, based on the fan fiction by Random Rex 6. Danganronpa is owned by Spike Chunsoft and Kazutaka Kuraka. All music used in this production was taken from the official Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony soundtrack composed by Masafumi Takada with two exceptions. The other two were composed respectively by David Arnold and Michael Price and New Order. This was impossible without the help of several talented voice actors and actresses, whose names and roles are all credited in the description. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you're interested to hear more, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for part two. Coming soon in the near distant future.